Viewer discretion is advised. Black girls, what you want? What you want? What you want to do? When they, when they strong, don't get to come for you. Bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Feminist Cops is filmed on location with the brave, strong women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Man down, man down, we have a civilian in critical condition. We need medic staff. Okay, I'm here now. I'm gonna save you. You're gonna be fine. The late to the party. Hey, sound Ooh. guy Edward. Wish you were doing his job instead of putting up signs. Hey, producing with me in video studio as always is Jared, who is not gay. Follow him on Twitter at notgayjared, me at S Crowder. With your thoughts, your comments, uh, your photoshops, your videos, of film my legal vacations, drawing conclusions. Jared, we good? I'm good enough. At G Morgan Jr. <laughs> Gerald is here. Hey, Gerald, what's the wine of the day? Staglin, Booth, Bell Oaks, Cabernet, and a big middle gay. finger. Because Maybe you can join the military. Me. Uh, hey, <laughs> so we have a lot to get to. We have Blair White as a guest today. We have Alex Epstein. Why? Uh, trannies in the military, and we also have uh, Inconvenient Truth coming out. Yeah. Two, Inconvenient Truth, the sequel. I hate Part all two. the things. Yes. <laughs> so this is a rough week. Uh, we will get to a little bit down the line here. Rights versus commodities in the wake of the health care ah, vote. This is important. Vice President Mike Pence broke Those the tie. Those are synonyms, right? Early. Pence. Synonyms. What, right? Rights and, yeah. Anything that I synonyms. want, hint, that's not a right. And uh, we'd love for you to send along uh, what you think should be a right versus what is a... What are a, synonyms? Can, can I get through just the intro? Sorry. All right. Well, also, <laughs> okay. A lot has happened this week. Go watch the show if you're not a Mug Club member. Uh, otherwise, you're a cheap bastard. But big thing <laughs> that everyone is still talking about, President Trump reversed the Obama decision on transgenders in the military. So, of course, everyone is outraged about this. Of course. What, did you, you even follow yeah. this? We'll talk about it with Blair White. He just came. He just tweeted it out. I think he caught some people by surprise with this. When he just tweeted it out, yeah. When he <laughs> it may did. Not be, it may not be the best idea. Okay, Jared. No opinions. No opinions. I just don't understand why he has to announce everything on Twitter. I feel like he he's kind of like overstepped. Possibly the purpose of Twitter. I get I get the idea of bypassing media, but yeah. like yeah, some uh, things maybe could use like a formal letter. Yeah, some things could yeah. use a second draft. Yeah. And, and listen, there's there's a lot to. I understand uh, that there there are different sides to this issue. It's not just an issue that requires one blanket statement, right? right? Especially, but I can understand when you're dealing with the suicide rate, when you're dealing with uh, the issues that obviously plague the transgender community, you can get into the nature nurture argument, but um, they won't be allowed in the United States military. In other news, the ISIS suicide bombing brigade wants you to know that they're open-minded and hiring. <laughs> 
There's a place That's, to go. It's a real dark humor. <laughs> yeah, start the show. Statistic joke right off the top. Yeah, real sadistic. Little tiny suicide joke. Uh, Blair's going to be thrilled. Uh, now, here's something <laughs> else people don't realize. Our, our, we'll talk about this next week more. Sven Computer, one of our interns, talked about this. In Germany, they're actually there's affirmative action, effectively, in the military for more sexual diversity. <laughs> among the troops in their hiring. They also, also, they're hiring more disabled people, but they're going out of their way good. to find more what transgenders. What could go wrong? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, and this is the issue when you deal with the identity politics that becomes a problem. The slippery slope argument is a perfectly valid argument, and it, this doesn't really come as a surprise, though, if you've been following the rhetoric, the heated That's rhetoric, of yeah. Germany's well, newest Fuhrer. And I tell you, great citizens of Germany, as our country rises like a phoenix from the ashes, we shall be a lesson to all of Europe as we come into our own as a new nation, reborn of great economic, military, and above all else, progressive might. Go on now. Get baby. Baby Hitler needs his strength. Go get your full light. Well, I shouldn't have been surprised. Yeah. Should have seen it come. In hindsight, <laughs> Ben and Jerry's now face a boycott. Oh, uh, well, the threat of a boycott. I love how now that's how lazy we've gotten. Yeah. yeah. Like rather than do something, ah, we're just gonna do a boycott. Just yell at you. And then when people didn't want to do a boycott because they liked things, they're like, we're gonna do a. Uh, can I do a boycott? I like <laughs> shopping <laughs> there. And now they're threatening boycotts, but they're threatening awesome. Ben and Jerry's with a boycott because a new study uncovered that uh, a major ingredient in herbicide. Weed killers was yeah. a nine out of ten of their ice cream. So, <laughs> what? but it was below EPA levels, I guess, <laughs> which makes you wonder what the EPA levels are. Yeah, well, I, 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 personally, I don't really care. If it still tastes good and it's not going to kill me, I'm good. It's still. I don't even like ice cream, but. I make an exception for going. I will tell you what, yeah, I, I will never do the Ben and Joy, Jerry's boycott. No. no. It's one of those things, I'm like, listen, I can't go with you there. there you Target, I can. They kick out Salvation Army yeah. Santa. Yeah. So I can get that stuff at Walmart, but th there's just only one place to get ice cream that, that, that is that. And if you try and say Brahms, no. No. <laughs> so this is. Bluebell. It's, it's, they, they've been Come under on. question, though, for G. Yeah, yeah. You want some Listeria with the Millennium <laughs> Crunch? <laughs> Take the lesser of two evils. I'll take they some. They cancel each other out. You blend them together. It's great. <laughs> I'll take GMOs <laughs> over just death. It's like the it's like the angel of death. That's what listeria is. It's horrible. It's like three times with Bluebell. Yeah. yeah. We'll just get a letter Poor from guys. the lawyers. Sorry. Uh, so this, is, this has been accusations for a long time of Ben and Jerry's with the GMOs. Yeah. This isn't a first time for a for kind of a granola company, and uh, the tests is the tests were actually prompted. A lot of people don't realize this uh, of the products upon the release of a, a few new flavors, which. Looking back, could have been suspicious. Uh, Monsanto Mania and Run DDT. Oh, it almost seems like yeah. that was a canary in the coal mine. <laughs> yeah, you know that's, that's bad marketing. <laughs> sometimes you gotta really just check the labels on the shelf, folks. <laughs> What's check the it's like that skull cap from Walmart again. You know, DDT. Yeah, I thought about that. Yeah. yeah, I'll put that back on the shelf. I don't want to harm any <laughs> birds' eggs. So, uh, okay, we're going to talk with Blair White about the transgender issue in the military. This is something that that, that I think is important that ties in because. Um, what we're talking about today with transgenders in the military is not at all the same conversation that we had yesterday or tomorrow. Wow. The changing rule book. And a perfect example is this was on The View. One of their hosts I hate went this segment. and had an LGBTQ <laughs> AAIP panel to prove how beautiful and how, how, uh, how we should all be open-minded to the developing community and that these, these folks are, 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 are people to be... It's the opposite of that. Roll the clip. I mean, when I first came out to my mom, I came out to her um, as a lesbian originally when I was like in 11th grade. And then yeah, she after knew. that, I told her that I was pansexual. And then she was like, oh, so you can be with men then? And I'm like, yeah, but I um, huh? don't like men romantically. So like, sorry, mom. <laughs> I take pleasure <laughs> in disappointing you, mother. Pansexual, but you can't be with men romantically. But does that mean just men sexually? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so look at this guy. He's like, I got okay, this. Let so me explain I it as though we understand. As pansexual, homo romantic. First of all, do you all uh, understand? That? Now, do you all pansexual, <laughs> he, uh, ho, pansexual, homo romantic? Do you all understand this? Here's the part where they all lie. Yes. <laughs> okay, so basically, ah. it means that I like men sexually, right? But I don't like men romantically. You're a user. This is a great, this is horrible. Can you imagine if a guy said, you know, I just yeah. like, yeah. I like bitches for sex. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. You call them pigs. This, and, you'd be, I, and you'd never get a job again. This is a horrible, yeah. this is a horrible human being. And this is the, this is the kind of hypocrisy that we allow to slip by. <laughs> It would be the most horrifying statement on television, would have millions of plays on YouTube yeah. if a guy just flat out said, it would be hilarious, but if a guy just flat out said, <laughs> I only like women for sex. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Jane I don't want to buy them flowers slut. or dinner. I just want to have sex with them. But they're like, oh, wow, this is beautiful. It's all different kinds of love. And here's the deal. People will say, why are you picking on the fat land whales? Well, listen, I know we're supposed to feel bad for her here because she's she's fat and she's ugly, right? But first off, ha half of those are choices. Let's be clear. But here's the deal. They were maybe bullied at some point. I understand that. But we are not bullying people when they are trying to determine exactly how we can speak and what we can think. That's the point to this panel. Guess what? We're no longer bullying when you just got done objectifying men saying that they were nothing more than a hump stick. You're a bad person. Also, here's something else that I find funny. When I think of discrimination or prejudice, I think of the world that doesn't understand people and judges. But what I've what if you understand is that and you do some judge? of the harshest critics of <laughs> these identities and, and pronouns are the LGBTQ plus community. <laughs> yeah. Is that an accurate statement? Most definitely. Now, it's funny, is we used to be accused of straw manning when we'd write down LGBTQ AAIP, yeah. and then we just started writing LGBTQ plus. Yeah, yeah apostrophe five, yeah, yeah. R, T, si yeah. negative silent Z. A, a silent Q <laughs> somewhere in there. So we were accused oh of straw gosh. manning, and even here, it has become so wide, the umbrella term here. There's LGBTQ AAIP, there's LGBTQ AIP, Q can mean queer, there's sometimes there's two Qs because it can be queer and questioning. I've seen it a multitude of different ways. Yeah. I'm not making it up. You asexual, intersex, asexual. Asexual, intersex, Ugh. allies, queer, or questioning, depending, pansexual it is exhausting <laughs> these are no these are all what actual day of the week things is it? <laughs> and, and and here you even just see them trying to cover themselves listen i know some people out there you always get some smart ass in the comment section though keep, keep commenting i want to see your comments below if you think if you think this is as important as i do because a lot of people will say well look we're talking about a budget there's a budget to about to be passed and you're talking about a uh, case you know why because this is a fundamental attempt at a retransformation of society this in tandem with ABC, NBC, CBS, every single mainstream newspaper, Take Late Night, Samantha Bee, Trevor Noah, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, Conor, every single person, when they're trying to push this agenda, which completely breaks down the barriers of biology and even, yeah, heteronormative tradition, which has been the bedrock of society since the beginning of time, I think it's important. I think culture is upstream from politics, and that's why we're talking about it. Here's something else funny. When you're queer, it almost becomes like a second nature yes. to spot hey, like, okay, who is safe and who is not. <laughs> because when I walk down the street and I see other feminine people with shaved heads, we immediately make eye That's contact. It. I'm yes. like, I know exactly what is up uh, with you. I got you. If anything happens, call it. <laughs> I'm right behind you. Call it a, your guess is as good as mine's intuition. No, <laughs> sweetheart. When somebody else is walking down the street with purple lipstick and looks like the girlfriend from American History X, that's not second nature. That's just using your eyes. <laughs> I know you. I got you. Well, hold on a second. Aren't you? Just, what, what do you mean? You're right behind them. We're going to be right if they're a man, right behind them with a strap on to peg them because that's all they're good for. This is a bad person. This is a person who happens to be ugly and fat, so you want to feel bad for them. But this is a bad person who uses people, also has very little to offer intellectually. You need to understand what into it, what is second, uh, what is she second? Six nature? sense. Six sense. Sense. Then second, I don't know what it is, she but anyway, let's continue. Can we go back to that? Yeah, can you go back to hitting on me and trying section? to tell me you so, love look, everyone? So if, I, so if I told you I was a bisexual, would that change something for you? I'd want a negative HIV test first. <laughs> I am very open to a woman who says she's bisexual. I'm like, oh, I get it. When a man says that, I'm like, so you're gay. I can't yeah. really Everyone hard that. Time. It's my it's own hang up and I know it's a double standard, but I don't know no. why my brain nah, goes there. An I think standard. that yeah. just all comes back to toxic masculinity. Yes. Uh, um, just the uh, idea uh, that men have to drink. be very masculine, very aggressive. And this is why it matters. It's blame it on toxic masculinity, which is a huge irony because the left likes to blame, the, the, this includes feminist LGBTQ AIP, social justice warriors, and the mainstream platform, including Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton uh, of the DNC, to they blame things on toxic masculinity while perpetually trying to make men out to be toxic. Yes. <laughs> they demonize men. You know, with toxic masculinity, what do they mean by that? We'll do a whole, I think, in-depth yeah. video because what they, we expect men to be masculine, yes. We expect them to be aggressive. No, that's incorrect. But when people like this, who are perpetual victims, see any kind of man who is uh, uh, authoritative, a man who knows what he wants, a man who is able to make decisions, a man who can lead, they see that as aggressive. Well, we need to define words like aggressive, and they just file that all under toxic masculinity. Masculinity. By the way, no, if you want to talk about, there is one aspect of masculinity in society that's probably become toxic. It's the pickup culture of tweeting, uh, teaching, well, tweeting women sometimes, teaching, <laughs> teaching women and 
treating women. There, that was the word I was looking for. <laughs> As Anthony Weiner, he's tweeting women, but treating women as though they're nothing more than sex, sex objects, which is what Little Mrs. American History X with the purple lipstick. Yes. And, yeah, she is out. She is the only toxically masculine archetype there. <laughs> <laughs> which is the irony of the entire panel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, they go back to the view. We'll talk about this with Blair White. I just thought it was a perfect day. They go back to the, the view on the, on the, uh, the what do you call it? Panel. On set yeah, there. Yeah, the this panel. is on location. This is their package. They edited it, <laughs> brought it back in. Can't say that. They're going to do package. it here with the panel. And this is the part of the show where the black progressive hosts <laughs> realize that they are not as progressive as they thought they were, and, and, and they're very confused. I'm very confused. <laughs> yeah, give it to me. Let's go. <laughs> I'm very confused. Um, I don't understand... The woman that said, I, I'm this bisexual, so, so I like to, no, I'm pansexual. She's not a woman. She yeah. is oh. they. they. She <laughs> doesn't, pronounce. she actually doesn't identify with a gender. Well, you just said she. Or a pronoun. Okay. Thank you. I got your back, you <laughs> no psychopath. No so, no so Abrina, but, she, but she talked about Abrina. men and women Abrina. in those terms, though. Because that's the only way she can explain they. her sexual attraction. <laughs> the only way they. Oh! oh! <laughs> Listen, I got, she literally looks, it goes from, hey, hey, virtue signal to, hey, no, it's not she, it's they, because she doesn't like to be called the, using she, and then goes, I got your back. Then someone else says, no, I no, hate all the that's things. offensive. I can't believe you would do this. Like, oh my God, she apologizes. You know, Apollo, oh my gosh, I did. I just, I said I got, but I meant to say they. And it's you like a put, Simon Says toy from hell. At some point, it's just, hey, wait, 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 you know, what are your preferred gender pronouns? Uh, Fuck you, that's your pronoun. <laughs> Okay, you changed it eight times within a within a span of this Who can know? video package. Who can know? It wasn't even the show that was the view. Uh, yeah. It was the video package. They changed their opinions <laughs> on what they want to be called, and they want. This is why uh. it's okay to make fun of them. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter how unattractive they are. Doesn't matter how much they were bullied, because at some point we all become adults. And now yeah. they want to bully everyone. That was bullying right there. Yes. You can't say this. You have to say that. And someone goes, you can't say that. No, you can't say that. And it gets worse from there. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And you wonder why we have a problem with this? Really? <laughs> If you look like a guy, I'm calling you a guy. If you look like a girl, I'm calling you a girl. Deal with it. Sorry. I, even if it's not, even if we don't simplify it that much, it is so exhausting. Yeah. Did you picture this? On the battlefield? <laughs> on the front line? <laughs> Sir, no. SEAL Team 6? All right, he uh, has a clear shot. Um, I prefer Z. All right, sorry. Z. What does Z mean? It's gender neutral and Bin Laden got away. Take him out. How do you know he identifies as a he? <laughs> and this is the thing. It's, it's the ever-changing language, and it is used as the ultimate bully pulpit. And all great uh, you know, authoritarian regimes have done that throughout history. I'm not comparing... Little Miss American History X redux there to Hitler. <laughs> I'm not. What I'm saying is that every authoritarian regime has used language yes. first and foremost mm -hmm. as its most yes. effective political weapon. Yep. And that's why I wanted to do this segment because in the wake of the the healthcare, uh, the the the, the dust stop, see, <laughs> this week with uh, with uh, Pence coming in, you know, it was 51 to 50, and uh, there's a basically motion. Kill the bill. Yeah, kill, kill the bill. Us. As this was down on the Senate floor, people came in and screamed out, "Kill the bill! Don't kill us!" And this is, again, why language matters so much. So let me ask you this, since you guys aren't, uh, you have, seem to have two syllable phrases today. What, uh, what, You're on a roll, man. What does that mean? It means when that someone says, don't kill us, what does that assume? That assumes that the bill, if it goes through, it's going to kill them. <sighs> Thanks Murder. for the insight. No, no. <laughs> it's like a uh, very you, literal you asked. What it means is that someone is responsible for, how is someone responsible for killing you? It must mean they are proactively taking an action to kill oh, you. Oh, you want the yeah, existential okay? answer. So it assumes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it assumes that healthcare paid for by other people is a right. And this is yeah. what's so ironic. The left doesn't care about the rights of people who were paying for their own healthcare beforehand. They only care about the other big giant voting block of non-contributors who weren't paying for healthcare. Yeah. Well, yeah. My mom's a mm -hmm. cancer survivor. Needs a well, my dad's a cancer survivor. He actually would, he, he couldn't afford his healthcare. He needs not Obamacare. <laughs> he needs the opposite of that. So when we say you're killing me because you're not creating legislation or maintaining legislation that favors me, it assumes what, like Bernie Sanders always says, that it's a human right, healthcare. 
So I think it's an important distinction to make, and this is why the left cannot come to agreements. This is where we can't find common ground, we can't see eye to eye if we're not even starting with the same uh, premise as to what a right is. And we'll go through a few examples, and I would like to see your comments here on YouTube or, uh, or send us your, your tweets at S. Crowder, at, yeah. uh, at Not Gay Jared, with what you think are actual rights versus commodities, understanding the difference. So what is a right? Let's define this first. It's a just claim or title, whether legal, prescriptive, or moral, according to dictionary.com. Now, in the USA, the beauty of that is it's prescribed by the Constitution. Pretty so we say, yeah. well, how is it legal, prescriptive? Yeah. So it can be different, but human rights, they are based in natural rights. In the USA, they're prescribed clearly in the Constitution. Okay, what's a commodity? Now, to clarify, I know some people say, well, a commodity tends to be a raw sort of resource, like iron ore or gold. We're using a broader definition here, the ec economic commodities. Okay, economic commodities and services. In economics, a commodity is a marketable item produced to satisfy wants or needs, and it can comprise of either goods or services. All right? Marley is dead to begin with? Pretty good. You understand yeah, it? I think we're good. Yep. So this is where I think we, we have some disconnects. Let's go through some examples of, of things that people assume are rights. Human right to health care. Health care. Okay. What's your right? You have the right to take any legal measures you deem necessary to ensure your own personal health. That includes access, ability to purchase services of your choosing. No one should be able to impede you from seeking the healthiest life yep. possible. There you go. That seems pretty straightforward. What's a commodity? Well, a drug, a treatment or services created at the risk or investment of a business owner, like health insurance programs based around the concept of an aggregated risk pool balanced with offsetting costs and premiums or deductibles. The average annual cost of health care is uh, about 10,000, I think, something, 10,000 something dollars. I don't have the yeah, stat in front yeah. of me. That's a commodity. Hey, I have a right to health. Sure, you have a right to be healthy. I have a right to your Advil. No, you, no, you have to pay for Advil. No. Why? Because someone paid to create that Advil. That's a commodity. We need to understand what rights actually guarantee, and there's a fundamental difference, and we'll get to some of the rights that uh, conservatives fight for in a bit. But education, that's declared a right often from the left. Okay, what's your right? Sure, you have a right to educate yourself. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. To learn, to be unimpeded in pursuing your higher education thereof, or your personal education, that's your right. But what would be a commodity? Um, a degree, maybe, from a university whose cost is determined based on a quality of teaching, track records of a gra graduate, their viabilities, the flexibility of the services offer offered by the school. The average annual cost to in public state college is somewhere around 25000 I think a private college is close to 50000 So, again, that costs somebody something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It costs the professor. He had to get a degree. He had to get training to become highly specialized to teach at Harvard. You do not have it. You have a right to educate yourself. Go to the library. Read on the Internet. Use Bing if you want, whatever your preference is. <laughs> you don't have a right to force somebody else to teach you for Absolutely. free. Right? Commodity. OK, let's go to internet. We just had uh, Thomas Hayslett to talk about net neutrality. So this one seems to be confusing to people. Let's go through remedial. You have the right, sure, with the internet to be unimpeded in the purchase of internet access. And I would even uh, say including protection from dishonest inhibitory actions from an internet service provider. Good thing is, those are already protected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I tr we care. have these with monopoly laws in the government right now. So that would be your right to go get the internet that you want, the internet plan that you want. That is your right. What's a commodity? The internet or broadband access packages themselves. Now, a key term in economics is excludable. That means non-paying consumers can't access it, and rivalrous means that additional consumers increase the cost significantly. That's why net neutrality matters. These terms, excludable, rivalrous, tend to reoccur uh, when it comes to dealing with commodities. You mean I don't get HBO for free? Yeah, yeah, you don't get on there for free. You don't get HBO Go for free. <laughs> is everyone tracking? Any questions? Yeah, I'm good. tracking. It's pretty clear. Contraceptives. This is a new one, but <laughs> contraceptives. It's a right, right? It's a human right. Contraceptives. Well, okay, well, let's even go with this. You have the right to access and purchase any contraceptives of your choosing. I'll agree. No one should bar you from buying one. Buying a rubber at a truck stop or an IUD. I don't <laughs> care. Offended every Catholic or in the free world. free ride. <laughs> right. Or just free ride it. What's a commodity? The contraceptive. <laughs> Birth control pills, <laughs> condoms, IUDs, they don't just fall out of the sky. Someone invented them, often a man. <laughs> so this is, this is, a right protects your ability to pursue something. It ne a right almost never guarantees or forces somebody else to provide you with something. Yes. That's yeah. important. And I know we're, we've gotten off the beam now with contraceptives. People are saying, well, that's only the extreme leftist social justice warriors. So, okay, let's go to one that almost everyone seems on board with. Water. People say, well, it should be the most basic human right is water. Okay, sure. Your right. What is your right? Do you have the right to consume or utilize any non-privately owned water? I don't think anyone should be barred from accessing water. 
The antelope can go get water. He risks being torn apart by a lion, and that makes for great TV, but it's his right. <laughs> now, what would be a commodity? Well, maybe water itself, if it's filtered, sanitized, pumped directly into your place of dwelling through an intricate system of pipes and technology. It didn't happen for free. You have the right to water. You don't have the right to force somebody to pay to clean and sanitize your water. Do we understand this? Yeah. And here's something that's a fundamental, this is what I wanted to wrap up with, a fundamental difference in worldview. People say, oh, if you're an ideologue. It matters because everyone has some kind of a lens through which they see the world. The ism matters. Yes. Uh, and if you look at actually on the flip side, rights that conservatism fights for, rights that right now conservatives are fighting for most actively. I think we would probably agree conservatives, when you're talking about rights, they're most actively fighting right now for probably probably freedom of speech and guns. Yeah. Guns Those are two big and, issues. Uh, protection of life. I would say, yeah, protection of life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's start with freedom of speech. All right. So conservatives are actively fighting for that right. Well, okay. First off, how do you know it's your right? Where, where is that prescribed? Uh, Amendment number one, right? <laughs> freedom of speech, it's in the Constitution. It actually talks about free speech. Now, here's something, too, that's important to note. When conservatives fight for freedom of speech, even if you see the controversy with YouTube having censored some of our content or Facebook, you'll see a lot of conservatives say they actually have the right to do that. And we agree with that. They just don't have the right to lie to consumers about it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bad business practices, that's a different issue. But conservatives understand that we have the right to speak freely and are fighting for it. It's a right that the left doesn't believe in. They don't believe in it. Uh, professors don't believe in it. Now, I'm not just talking about in specific areas or instances. They don't believe in a generalized absolute right to free speech. We do. When we're fighting for it, we're fighting for the right to speak freely, fully understanding that we are not going to be paid to speak freely. Look at guns. What do we, we believe, okay, we believe that we have the right to keep and bear, it's a right that, that liberals don't believe in, right? So this, this is important, the fun, stay with me here. We believe that we have the right to own and keep guns. Well, where'd you get that from? Well, it's amendment number two. <laughs> so right now we're, we're just important. going through number one and two, sweetheart. <laughs> Bill of Rights. Are you still trucking, sweetheart? <laughs> okay, so there's at least, you, we're making the declarative statement, we have the right to keep and bear arms. That's the right we fight for. And like freedom of speech, we're just fighting for the ability to have them. We're not protesting Smith & Wesson to give us free guns. <laughs> and that's a fundamental difference in worldview because we look at the rights that then liberals declare that they're rights. Healthcare, education, water, shelter, basic universal income, right? You say, well, hold on, well, how do you know those are rights? Uh, I don't, we'll just file it all under the general welfare clause. It's nowhere in the constitution. It's me the, the ones that we <laughs> described are there by name. Yeah. Theirs don't even exist. But let's even go with it. Okay, you put it under the general welfare clause. Sure, okay, you have the right to pursue health care. Of course, yeah, you, we believe in the right to access to water. Sure, you have the right to purchase birth control. No, they are taking rights that don't exist, filing them under a term that was not meant for that, and then fighting for the right to force you and I to pay for it through our tax dollars. That is a fundamental worldview difference. The rights that are outlined and prescribed as per our legal documents, they don't even believe exist. What about freedom of speech? It's hate speech. What about the Second Amendment? Ah, Ruger makes too much money. <laughs> oh, so what, you don't believe those are rights? No. I think I should have a right to a 25 cent rubber to a truck stop and you should pay for it. This is something <laughs> that matters so <laughs> much because if you start off from a point where you don't even understand the difference between a right or a commodity, I don't, if it just gets to you replace right with something I want, well then rights would be ever changing and guess what, things that rights would infringe on other rights because everyone has different things that they want. Right when I was a teenager, I wanted Elle McPherson and my wall poster to come to life, but it wasn't my right. Guess what? For her, she'd feel like her rights were infringed upon. <laughs> As she should. As she should. Terrible. That is important. You can send some other examples. If you think that I'm wrong, rights versus economic commodities. Anytime someone just says something's a right and they declare it, call them on it. Well, where do you find that? And how do you justify it? Most of the time, they can't. All right, we'll be right back. Speaking of this with uh, Blair White. Ooh, that'll be fun. Yeah. It just isn't done that way.
All right, glad to have our next guest, uh, return guest, for two return guests yes. today. So uh, you can follow, uh, well, on Twitter, Ms. Blair White, of mm -hmm. course, at Ms. Blair White. I need to say at. I don't know if we need to use the at anymore. And then it, I think on it's assumed. YouTube, is it Miss Blair White X, Blair, on YouTube? No, it's just Blair White X. Blair White X. Edward Sound give me some more juice so I can hear Blair. I don't know what his deal is over there. Uh, how are you doing? This is obviously a, 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 a time where all this exploded. We had you booked before the, the whole military trans deal, and, and here you are. Yeah, it's been crazy. There's lots of meltdowns, lots of people with a lot of different opinions. I have mixed opinions. Um, I woke up to it, and of course, every social media I have was just blowing up media requests, like, talk about this, talk about this. Um, and like I said, my feelings are a bit mixed. I can totally understand how gender dysphoria um, would be something that would greatly affect performance. Um, then I also think, you know, on the other hand, who am I, like this prissy trainee in California, to tell anyone that if they like pass the requirements and like go through the psych evaluations, basic training, whatever it is that you guys do, because I'm not a military expert, who am I to sit here like in this apartment in LA and be like, you can't fight for me? I don't know, it's mixed feelings for I, sure. I understand, and I think that's actually a, a pretty balanced approach, but hey, you know what, let's bounce back to that because you used the word meltdown. I thought, perfect segue, meltdown. We were originally booking you to talk about this, your debate on YouTube with Onisia. Not good, do we have this clip? Yep, right. Quick clip, all right, Did you or did you not collect photos of underage girls to put in your videos, to rate or to call fat or skinny or acne, any of that s Did you or did you not? Let me look up the definition of collect. Uh, Onision, <laughs> did he really just say that? Yes, I just said that. <laughs> so I will say, this is probably the best, uh, most convincing transgender argument to people who aren't in the know, I would say, because no straight cis male can get that bitch. <laughs> that was unbelievable. <laughs> it's like you, you turned him into a high school pegboard. It was so, if you haven't seen it, oh, it was so, <laughs> I will tell you this. I've seen you, you know, have really well kind of like, I know you don't like this guy because it devolved pretty quickly. He wasn't answering questions okay. like you clearly are not buddies with Onision, right? No, no. And, you know, the thing is, like in the title of the video, I put a in quotation marks because I knew it wasn't going to be some formal, like pleasant, you know, debate or any type of like real substance to it. I knew it was going to be me. Like just talking shit to Onision, and it was a lot of fun. Well, it's it weird so much because, fun. like you said, you this prissy tranny in California, and you're debating yeah. this, I don't know, pseudo emo social justice warrior liberal who's telling you that you're intolerant. It's like, what, 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 what cosmic wormhole did I fall into? I think people feel that when they're watching this. The roles have reversed so much, it's hard to make sense of. Right, and what happens so often with these male feminists is they're so contradictory because if you look at Onision in particular his behavior um the way he's treated women and underage girls is absolutely just like effed like it's horrible like yeah. he's made videos rating bodies of like 12 year old girls in sports bras it's horrible so it's just totally contradictory yeah i know and he went after me for being a chauvinist because i wrote about how my wife and i didn't have sex until we were married I'm like, yeah. you rate 12 year olds. What? Yeah, I know. He's the definition of chauvinist. I know, I know. It is off. Okay, we'll go back to trans in the military. Just for people who haven't seen it, it's very entertaining. Um, and uh, I've, I've seen Blair have conversations that are productive and uh, that are, I would say, <laughs> more. This probably wasn't that, but I, I think you would probably. No. Yes. But it was, it was entertaining because this is a guy who just. It was entertainment. Not. Yes, it was entertaining. <laughs> okay, yeah. so military issue, the trans issue. We were talking about this uh, a little bit off air. I've always been against women in the front lines in combat roles. Uh, I've been against the idea of lowering standards, period, whether you're male or female. Right. Um, and, and we have. We've lowered physical uh, training requirements. We've lowered, like, mm -hmm. pull up. I mean, just as simple as pull-ups or push-ups, I don't think we should be doing that. We've also lowered the uh, the threshold for what drill sergeants can do with, with new uh, recruits in the military because people can be traumatized. It's become a much more politically correct environment. So I think my issue here and what... I don't think Trump handled this very well, the way it was just kind no. of rolled out, general blanket statement. But uh, as someone who very, very possibly wouldn't pass the psych evaluation to go into the military, um, it, I, I would say that's, you know, that's very similar to not passing the PT requirements. Isn't, do we, would we agree there's some validity here to, obviously there is some emotional volatility uh, with the trans community or psych, psychiatric volatility, and, and that needs to be shielded from the military on those grounds. Um, I would say yes and no. I think that right. what needs to happen is people need to be evaluated individually because there are people who 
say they transitioned earlier and they don't have any gender dysphoria really at all left. Um, okay. It really should be individual case by case basis. But I and so I do agree that the way it was handled, like the blanket statement, is weird. And immediately when this happened, um, my mind didn't go to like future trans people trying to join the military. It went to people who were already there. Yeah. It went to the number. It's so hard getting numbers on trans people. It's so hard. But I think the estimate was just like 7,000, 8,000 currently enlisted. Um, and so that's a lot of individuals that I'm concerned about, like losing their pensions, losing their GI, their GI bill. Right. Uh, that's where my mind went. And that currently is like unclear if that's going to happen. That's true. And that's a valid point. I think that's a real problem with basically, you know, when I, I went and entertained the troops and they, they weren't allowed to speak on the record. But Barack Obama, the social justice warrior in chief, turned the military for the first time into a social justice sort of uh, petri dish an experiment, whereas the military was always supposed to be devoid of that for a long time. And so he rushed things quickly that maybe they weren't necessarily ready for. Um, and, and now, like you said, it's like, hold on a second, we've, we've run into some issues. Uh, uh, something we were talking about, obviously we've talked about this in the show, the, the trans suicide rate being higher. Hmm. Um, well, there is an issue, not Gay Jared brought this up, that it, someone in the military, right? Is it, is it I a have platoon? it right here. It's, it's, unironically, CNN released a study right alongside the, the announcement of Trump in the transgender military saying, uh, a suicide attempt in an army unit can lead to more study finds. Basically, it says, hey, if there's if one even post um, service retired soldiers, if one of those people in the unit commits suicide, there's a very, very high chance of other people from that division not be able to cope, cope with that and right. also committing suicide. So if we're taking people, I'll let you make the point, but it's, if we're taking people who are from the cis population, have these problems, I can only imagine it's much worse with yeah. the transgender population. Well, and that's why psych evaluations are, 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 are frequent. And I think that would be like a valid conversation to have, but that's yeah. not how it was brought up by you know the president yeah. and it just devolved quickly. Yeah, and the problem, I think you talked about this on your show before, the word transgender has just been so inflated that it includes so many things. And so the problem is when you use the word now, you kind of also are talking about people who don't have a formal diagnosis of gender dysphoria. Right. Um, and so a lot of these people being um, kept out could very well be completely stable individuals. So it's yes. it's so messy and it's so hard. And it's like I said, that it's that confusing. Yeah, I think honestly, people wouldn't have nearly as big of an issue if it weren't for, sorry, Jared censor button, if it weren't for the social justice warrior bullshit that comes along with it. Listen, the last, I mean, you know, having, yeah. having a conversation with Onision is exhausting, right? We can have a conversation and it's fun. There's some levity. We can have some disagreements. We can agree. But having a conversation with a social justice warrior who's all about pronouns and LGBT is exhausting. Put them on the front lines. People don't need that at the front of their mind. No. I think that's the big issue now is because the, the trans people, the, the people in the trans community who are asshole -ish scream the loudest. Absolutely. And that's the part that I struggle with. And maybe you do as well. It's like, trying to decipher if it's really the majority of them or if it's just we're so involved in these conversations on the internet that it really seems that way. Because when I think about it, I have met, most trans people I've met disagree with most, if not all, of like the crazy activisty stuff, and that gives me hope. And in fact, um, interesting story, the first trans person I ever met um, and who kind of helped me um, find my way was actually an, an ex-Marine. and. It was a transgender man and he served for a very long time and he was like the most badass person i ever knew most like amazing person i've ever met and so that's another part of me that's like well it's so hard to say like you can't do it you can't it's like <sighs> wait, wait this so wasn't... much of it is arbitrary is the problem so much of it is arbitrary because you think like what if they're not on hormones what if they are what if they don't have dysphoria it's so hard yeah well i mean that's where a disagreement we had where if people watch contextually my interview with a psychiatrist where i said you know today's trans have more in common with transvestites of europe like that was really insensitive i said well, hold on a second i was talking with a psychiatrist talking about how they have to label anyone who yeah. puts on a dress and says i'm trans that skews the statistics because they have to label it that way. And I said, well, what's the difference between that and a transvestite? She said, well, nothing, but they're or all labeled the same yeah. in yeah. the umbrella. And, and like you said, that's why it's so hard to get numbers. Okay, but moving on with this, to, to talk about this, we were just we were talking about this clip from The View. And this is a great example <laughs> where the black progressive realizes she's not super progressive. She's like, okay, um, so this uh, woman is, uh, the woman identifies, by the way, as pansexual, Homo romantic, and everyone's I saw that. yeah, and everyone says yeah, we understand it. Come, like come, this is no, no, you know the people in the trans community don't understand. This is made up as we go along. And as she gets corrected by someone on the View, she says it's not she, it's they. The black lady says well, yeah. but but they 
used men and women, that's because it's the only way she can describe her preferences. Then someone turned to her and say, not she, they. And they're like, oh, I was like, ah, ah. Could you imagine this out there on the battlefield? Like that's, I think, the issue people are concerned with. Right. I will say though, I highly doubt those people are getting in and like passing any type of like requirements. <laughs> I will say that, like, they SJWs wouldn't five wouldn't years survive. Ago. They wouldn't a while ago, but it's, it's getting more now. I mean, you you lower requirements, you keep lowering them, and you politicize the military. Now yeah. it's like a lot of people want to go in sometimes to prove a point. Um, I, I do think that's a good point. I mean, they, the people who are in now, they shouldn't lose their pension. They shouldn't, you know, if they're a part of that, they shouldn't be yeah. be, be, be screwed and left out in the cold because of sure. some political football. Even that does if, that does concern me because it's like, regardless of how anyone feels about anyone's lifestyle or whatever, like. I'm sure there's plenty of people in the military whose lifestyles I don't agree with. Maybe they're like some, I don't know. But, yeah. But um, like, still are like red-blooded Americans who put their lives on the line and potentially are willing to make like the ultimate sacrifice, giving up their lives for their country. So, the idea of them losing their benefits and everything that they deserve is is troublesome to me. That's really the only thing. And and that is that is pretty crappy. I, I do think, yeah. and, and you're able to, to often discuss this and recognize it, especially in the military, it really is about the health of the unit. So that's where yes. the, how the unit functions does matter. And that's mm -hmm. why some people who doesn't mean they're bad people, doesn't mean that they shouldn't be allowed in other realms of society are not an effective part of military unit. A lot of things people don't understand about the military with women on the, uh, the retreat rates are higher because women on the front lines with men and men typically went to war to protect women, right? To protect yes. the ovulators. And now you put them on the battlefield, so the unit becomes very protective of the woman and acts in a way we as men are not as effectively violent with women present. Um, that's a huge factor. And I think it's not just trans now, it's we were talking about this with a view, trans and gender queer. If you say, okay, trans, like you said, you're male to female, fine, yeah. you're in the male restrooms. But you have people going in who don't want that. They go, no, hold on, I'm actually fluid and gender queer, well, well, that matters when the rest of the unit is going, come on, we don't know the rules here, Sarge. I mean, I just want to be able to take a dump without yeah. being watched by this person who's a lesbian today and straight tomorrow. Uh, absolutely. And, and the difference between like, sexual and gender person, because the word transsexual still actually means something very specific. Right. Um, the word transgender is so inflated. And you and I are right there with like women on the front lines as well. Um, but. Good news is I can't be drafted now, so thank God. Yeah, you know that, what I mean? Is that because thank of the, the legal change? Yeah, thank God. Yeah, well, thank thank God for unequal rights. Uh, geez, think about that for a right. second. Uh, <laughs> that's one of those things. It's just when women talk about certain things they don't have, or well, now it's even sillier. We're like, gosh, I had a guy open the door for me. I had someone cat call me. Like, guess what? Okay, we die. We're the first ones who are literally called against our will to die. End, end case, okay? There's some give and take. <laughs> I get shot at. Absolutely. There, there's give and take, and it's like, honestly, this brings you back to like my old like <laughs> MRA days when I was like 18. But it's like men have every disadvantage, and women have like none. <laughs> like it's kind of crazy, actually, when you really think about it, especially legally. You know what I mean? Like more prison time for the same crime, etc. Yeah, and then prison time is uh, distinctly less pleasant for men uh, when we go to prison. <laughs> um. Right. It's not orange is the new black. No, it is not. There's no lower prepon. Uh, let me ask you this. So what would, how would you ideally see this scenario play out? Because we've seen the outrage there on both sides. Um, how would this ideally move forward, do you think, in a way that's, that's fair but also conducive toward you know, the most effective uh, fighting force on Earth? I, th I think just it's so hard to say because like, I know people with like severe acne can't even join the military because that like has other side effects like psychologically, yeah. which is crazy. Uh, but I think that individuals should just be screened individually. I think that if you can pass the test, you can fight. However, what are your thoughts on um, trans people serving in other capacities? Because to me, it seems like, well, damn, you can't even be like a cook in the canteens or you can't even be like a nurse. You know what I mean? What are your thoughts on that? The gays make some great coffee and dishes. Yes, yes. Um, well, you right. know what? Like, sorry, I go yeah, I would, I would tend to say in that point, uh, I have no problem with, with women doing those jobs as well. So I think yeah. it's a discussion that I think still needs to be entertained because, again, of the dynamic of a unit. And I do think that with the military, it comes down to purely a numbers game. In other words, if this makes this unit 12% less effective at fighting, I think it's totally fine to be discriminatory in the military in those capacities because these people are going out to die. So, but like you said, it's hard to find those numbers. But that being said, I'm fine with a woman doing a job in the military that she can do as well or better than a man. We just know that's not fighting at the right. front lines. So um, 
that would tend to be my position on it, but I would, I would need, we would need to see, this is why the military is not meant to be a social experiment. Yeah. It's, the only goal of it is to kill people as effectively as possible. Whatever does that, to me, is the most important role of the military. Works. Right. Yeah. I guess everyone's just so focused on like the the combat part and I kind of thinking like, well, what about other positions? But I mean, it is all about, you know, effectiveness. But I think so. you're right. I don't think the president thought that through before the announcement. That's the issue. I think it was too blanketed and it didn't allow for a conversation that should happen. No. And it kind of sucks because like I'm a Trump supporter and I voted for Trump. So I'm like, I'm more willing to like give him the benefit of the doubt and like look into things past just the tweets. But it sucks that like the rest of the country just sees tweets and they don't really look further and it becomes like more ammunition against him. So that's yeah. frustrating. And it's not been the great, the greatest week for him with Jeff Sessions and stuff. Cause there's only so much you can be like, Hey, this guy's great. And then your supporters go, Hey, this guy's great. And they're like, this guy sucks. It's like, well, hold on a second. It's like, okay. It's tough. It t it's tough to keep track. Um, I, you know, even if you dig a little further, he, he wasn't super clear on this. And I, I, yeah, I think it's important to know exactly where he stands, what the policy is, so that the people can know if they actually agree with it or disagree with it. And then certainly for people yeah. like you and myself, so that then we can at least argue one side that's definitive. I don't think that's the case. Yeah, no. yeah. We don't know. Not every policy you can't down to 140 characters on Twitter. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. You can't really argue super strongly for or against it because it's like, well, what happens to people that are there? What happens with this? Like, it's all very arbitrary and a lot of it's still um, not out yet. So. so it sounds like, would you be advocating, I guess, at least if you, we were to say blanketed, more concrete, meaning, okay, someone needs to have gone through these stages of transition so we can identify them and know where to put them as opposed to gender fluidity, you know, in the military? Yeah, because, I mean, there are a lot of documentaries about trans people in the military and, and most of them are honestly like trans men who are like on testosterone and like they've completely transitioned and like they're just kind of badasses and it's kind of cool to watch actually. Sometimes uh, they strangle Ben Shapiro live on air. Right. <laughs> still entertaining. Yeah. Nothing more but feminine I'm, Zoe I'm Tur still, than threatening violence. God. I'm still not over that video. I still watch it sometimes. I just go back to it. I'm like, wow, that's like horrible. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, this is tragic. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, again, I just think individual screenings would be better because, and the, the gender fluid shit definitely, I think, should just be kept out because you do need a binary. You do need to know where to put people. Yeah. And if you make it complicated, like, you just stay the fuck out. It's not the place for you. Right. It's not, like you said, it's not a social experiment. Well, especially if we're also going to talk about, you know, you have liberals coming out when it's convenient talking about rape culture in the military. It's like, okay, well, listen, you have a bunch of people who are going out to war who just killed folks, right? Saw pink mist and they're coming back and they're amped up and then you put a woman in their barracks and they're in, the, in their shower and they get, that's a problem. And so it's the same thing when it comes to the trans issue. We need to know where to put them because again, effective fighting military unit, you can't just have someone who's gender fluid who goes wherever they want on any given day because then you're encouraging quote unquote rape culture, which by the way, is not nearly as much right. of a problem in the military as uh, the media has made it out to be. It's been a, it's been a right. weird one. It absolutely Right. It absolutely has to be binary. If trans people are going to be there, it has to be completely binary. It can't be um, gray areas and questions because that's just a mess. Sounds like hate speech to me. Uh, Miss Blair White, <laughs> where is the best place for, uh, for people to find you here? We have to get going. Uh, YouTube.com slash Blair White X. And my Twitter is Twitter.com slash MS Blair White. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for coming on. It just happened to be, I guess, providential. It was just we were going to talk about Onision, and instead we talked about the most topical issue of the day. Uh, Ms. Blair White, we will have you back right. soon. We have to go with Alex Epstein, oh. I believe, next. Get it. Damn it, Josephine, am I watching Louder with Crowder? Is it 9 p.m. Eastern on a weekday? Does Bernie like free s***? Is the sun rising in the east? Of course I'm watching Louder with Crowder. You know I never miss it. You're obsessed, Colton. It's not healthy. The hell would you know about health, Miss Forklift with teeth? Just a stupid show, Colton. They don't care about you. Give me what was that? You. That's the last straight from the pit of hell, and you know it. Take a look right there. Boom! From Edward the Sound Guy with a verified check mark. So I don't want to hear any more of your bullshit lies. You know he's not a real sound guy. 
just the character he plays. Dude, just, nah, it's that kind of stupid shit that shows just how ignorant you are, Josephine. He is a legitimate, qualified sound technician from a trade school, and he's traveling the whole damn world working with sound-related appliances. If your fingers weren't too fat to operate a tricaster, maybe you could try it every once in a while. You'd know better. Uh, 30 people didn't show up to work. That Jared's not even gay. I've had it with your lies, Josephine. In back of me, Satan. Satan? Well, and I'm quoting scripture from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Maybe if you put down your soap bags every once in a while for a hot minute, you know better. There you are, it's live read time, which usually happens about once a week. Maybe you're listening on iTunes or SoundCloud. A lot happened this week. A lot happened. A lot happened. And that's the beauty of the Daily Show, uh, which you get the show once a week for free, and you get clips, but you don't see the full Daily Show. That's for Mug Club members only. You miss so com much. Mug Club. It's $99 annually, 69 for students, <laughs> veterans, active military. Here's the deal. Listen, it keeps everyone employed here. It allows us to not be beholden to the YouTube and Facebook overlords. They're but jerks. you know what it is. You know where to find it. Uh, if at this point you watch... Kimmel, Conan, Fallon, Trevor Noah, Samantha B, Seth My, all of the above, ABC, NBC, CBS, and you don't see the need for any alternatives out there, um, then there is no convincing you. If you want to see Not Gay Jared and Sound Guy Edward and everyone else involved with the program who puts out the daily content, Not Destitute, and Out in the Street, and you understand the value in an alternative to uh, all the late night entertainment shows, go ahead and join yourself in my club. Right, glad to have our next guest. Love to have her. He's been on the show before. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like we always say that when people return as guests, it's sort of it's, it's like Carson bringing someone over the couch, except we are not successful like John yeah. Carson. That was a horrible comparison. Uh, but the origin story is over. Often with superhero films, the origin story is like you got to introduce the audience exactly. to the person. So they have to kind of explain what they're about. His book, The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter. Don't call him Stein. It's yeah. Alex Epstein. How are Epstein. you, sir? Epstein. That's actually totally wrong, but is it? Did I get it? What did, yeah. I, did I just? What, what, what did I just it's say? Ep, it's Epstein, but I definitely don't care. Well, I know, but I was referencing Young Frankenstein. But um, mm -hmm. well, you know, it looks like number, <laughs> number two is the final visit for Alex Epstein. It is okay. Uh, it, it, it's not foolproof, anyways. I've been on this program forever. Still can't bl explain why I suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we still so. can't explain it. Listen, so we wanted to have you on. It was it was actually a toss up between uh, you or my father because the Detroit film is coming out. And, and that's also likely a uh, bull excrement, but Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth 2 is out. Now, did you get like a screener of this? Because it seems that you've already seen the film, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I used a lot of fossil fuels to get to this <laughs> movie. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot. Because I'm in San Francisco now, which of course I had to use fossil fuels to get there from the DC area where I grew up. But, but sure. even in the near term, uh, I had to go from San Francisco to L.A. and back in the same day, which is a miracle of petroleum, Yes. Uh, in order to see this, quote unquote, documentary, because I wanted to be, to be able to credibly comment on it in advance and particularly to write a review uh, of it. So, yeah, I am fully qualified. I, I managed to finagle my way into a screening full of people who were not wearing I Love Fossil Fuel shirts. Well, you know what? Listen, it's actually pretty easy. If Al Gore is attending the screening, with I would imagine with a, a, a red carpet premiere, just walk up to him wearing open-toed shoes. You're golden. You're into the premiere You're right done. away. So let me ask you this. We've had uh, Anne McElhinney on the show specifically because she did uh, Not Evil, Just Wrong, where she went through a few key predictions from An Inconvenient Truth, the first one, that were verifiably false, right? I mean, to the point where it's embarrassing. Where does Al Gore go from there? What can we expect to see in this movie? How does he turn that around? It's interesting because he, one of his prominent quote unquote predictions was that there would be 20 foot sea level rises. Now he didn't specify the exact timetable, but we were led to believe that it would be several decades. And even if you look at the UN, which I think relies heavily on climate prediction models that can't predict climate, even they say <laughs> things like two feet, right? right? So in, what Gore has this ingenious thing sort of where he starts out and he, he quotes a chorus of people whom he later explains to us are either fools 
or shills from the fossil fuel industry, right. and they are ridiculing Gore. And one of the things they say is that, oh, you said sea levels would rise 20 feet. And I, I perked up and I thought, wow, how is he going to get out of this one? Uh, because they definitely did and definitely aren't. Right. And what he did is he just he just brought up this chorus to bring forward this idea that since an inconvenient truth, Al Gore has been victimized by fools and shills. That's premise number one right. of the movie, who claim that he overpredicted these things. Well, first off, and, even if that were true, it still doesn't answer the 20 feet question, but I'm tracking. Right, right, right. But he's, he's sort of, he's making it seem like he's going to. Right. And then he, he says... Then, then kind of premise two is, well, on, on the renewables replacing fossil fuels issue, that's totally happening. And he gives a whole bunch of anecdotes, which is distinct from data. Yes. He gives a whole bunch of anecdotes allegedly proving that. And then he gives a whole bunch of anecdotes proving climate has gotten worse. But he never quite addresses the 20-foot thing. And then you step back and you think, wait, he never actually proved any of these are trends. He yes. just gave us anecdotes that make us think that the trends exist. And right. the, fortunately, professionally, I study the trends, so I know the trends. So it's just, it was, I found just incredible, there's not evil, just wrong, but no, it's, it's really evil to manipulate data to make a trend seem like the opposite of what it is. And, and I can elaborate, but the trends of, in terms of how vital fossil fuels are and how safe we are from climate are the exact opposite of what this manipulative movie says they are. One second, Nakajir's going to have a heart attack. Why are you laughing so hard? <laughs> it's like a really bad episode, or a typical episode of Alaska State Trooper where a bunch of cool stuff, really cool stuff, almost happens. Oh, but yeah, you see, yeah. coming up, up. And you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't uh, shoot a grizzly bear. And it's like, whoo, thank God we didn't run into a grizzly bear. Yeah. <laughs> Next episode. Um, what did he do? So he, a few predictions, obviously. The sea rise, okay, it doesn't seem like that's answered. What about the catastrophic uh, drought? And then, of course, another one was this, this proliferation of, of disease and natural disasters. Did, did, he address, did, he address, did he address any of those specifics? Because, you know, a part of me did think with the first inconvenient truth, like, hey, this is kind of ballsy to put out predictions uh, that you can be called on, but not if you just don't actually answer people calling you on it. I think there's a great lesson in the movie because it feels like he's addressing them because he gives you anecdotes that if those anecdotes were generally the case, mm -hmm. would vindicate him. And you don't know in the movie that those anecdotes aren't generally the case. So let's take let's just take um, severe drought okay. or something like that. So he'll show a drought in Syria, then he makes a whole bunch of bogus foreign policy connections. But we'll leave that uh, aside. So what you're led to think is, oh, drought-related deaths are getting worse, right? More people are dying from drought people. And this is actually untrue, completely untrue. Drought-related deaths in the last 80 years are down 99.98%. Yeah. They're virtually non-existence thanks to what? Thanks to industrial development <sighs> that turns technology. you know droughts into not a problem. Yeah. So this is just a complete misrepresentation. And if we took away everyone's fossil fuels, droughts would become a huge problem again because we would de-develop. Right. What about like Ebola and Zika? That seems like it's the result of gl global warming, climate change. I mean, this is, I, I talk a, li a little bit about the history of some of these in moral case for fossil fuels because they act like, oh, these things have never crossed any borders before. Malaria is a disease of just the cold. And historically, these aren't true. We have records showing people dying of these things all over the place. And guess what? When you have more travel, you're going to have uh, potentially more transferring of these things. So again, your friend is industrial development. That's what keeps us safe. That's what allows us to make progress. So the idea that we should de-energize our society, restrict people's fossil fuels, and then disease will get better, that's the opposite. Disease deaths are on the decline, but only as long as we continue industrial development. Well, what if they say, okay, we understand that, that uh, disease are, are, is on the decline or deaths are, are lowered now because of technology with drought, but it's a ticking time bomb. We can only do this for so long before we run out of resources. Hence, you know, I know Al Gore makes a strong, well, Al Gore makes a passionate argument for replacing everything with wind or solar. Now, we've talked about in our program Germany and having to s sell off energy at, at net negative prices because solar is so unreliable and having energy droughts themselves. But uh, if he says, okay, yeah, te technology, the Industrial Revolution has led us out. Uh, for example, we have cures for polio. You know, you don't need to worry about tuberculosis. But now we're at a point where we're running out of resources. It seems that he, he, he could make that case. Uh, does he? Well, no, he definitely doesn't make that case. It's interesting with fossil fuels that people have two arguments. One is that we're using too much, and one is that we won't have enough. 
right. which is a little bit of a contradiction, right? Because nature would take care of the problem if we were running out and they should be happy. So what you can tell is they're just always finding a way to oppose fossil fuels without any kind of coherent narrative. And right now, because of the amazing technological achievements of the oil and gas industry with shale energy, that whole peak oil narrative is out the window, at least for a decade or two. So now they're just back to Do you remember peak oil? Much. Jared, a lot of people watching this who are younger don't even know that. That was the term, peak oil. Peak oil. It was a cover, yeah. of, cover of time. It was on, it was like, yeah. seemed like every other, every other day there was something on the, the, the Nat Geo channel, you know, or Discovery yeah. channel about peak oil. Remember, I haven't GOP heard that fear mongering, GOP fear GOP, I haven't heard peak <laughs> oil in years, Alex. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was still writing. I was writing about oil when I was ridiculed for believing that peak oil is bogus. Really, if you understand economics, this whole issue of depletion and replacement is just what the whole question is, what's the best form of energy right now and in the foreseeable future? And we have this amazing thing called freedom and a market, which allows us to decide that. And then if we start to run low on something or if the price goes up, then we start to replace it. But Gore is not an advocate of superior replacements because he's against nuclear power, he's right. against hydropower, he's against fracking, he's in favor of inferior replacements, the so-called solar and wind renewables, which are properly called unreliables. So he gets no credit <laughs> for progress. It's you know, properly called unreliables. You know, it's funny because that just shows us how some issues are politicized, uh, specifically with the national borders. An example we used was this idea of, of suppressors, silencers on guns. You know, here in the United States, they're opposed by the anti-gun lobbyists because they say, you know, everyone's going to be an assassin. Everyone's going to be a Corleone going around killing people and their face falling in spaghetti and meatballs. Whereas in the UK, where they have much more stringent gun laws, it's considered rude in many parts to not hunt with a suppressor. It's funny you mention hydropower. I'm from Quebec, a socialist province of Quebec, where there, there, there is no conservative, right? There's liberal and liberal separatists. They're on board with every single piece of climate change legislation that exists. Our electric bills, people always said, your hydro bill. I remember when people would visit, they'd say, hydro bill, your water bill. We'd say, no, no, electric, because it's almost all hydroelectric power in Quebec. So I, I, I guess I wasn't even aware of this until the last few months. That's been politicized where that's considered not green enough. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, why is that? Because, again, we've been doing that for a long It seems like it couldn't get more renewable than using the energy of running, falling water. Right. So the, the idea of green is to minimize impact on nature. Sure. And if you really want to minimize impact on nature, then you really just shouldn't do anything. We should have never built New York City. You should never have a child. And uh, many social and, justice warriors excel in this part. Yes. And you know, North Korea is a much better country than South Korea True. because they've done very little impacting of, of nature. Well, so they haven't they, created any blowing up phones. So I'll give that's one for North Korea. So if you look at, um, you made me lose my, my turn of thought. That's uh, hydro. We were talking about hydro. Yeah. If you look at hydro, they'll say, well, look, we can't dam a river. And then they look at nuclear. We can't split an atom. And you say, wait a second, isn't CO2 supposed to be the catastrophe of the century? You're not willing to dam a river to stave off the catastrophe of the century? You're not willing to risk a meltdown to stave off the... And what you find is that, no, because there, the environmentalism is, has only supported one form of energy in its entire history, and that is imaginary energy. They only support sources that don't work as long as they don't work because every source of energy has a major impact. So as soon as solar becomes practical, they'll say, oh my gosh, it's destroying our countryside. We can't allow that. Yeah. Well, that's also that's also a great point to even think about, again, because hydropower was electric power where we were in yeah. Quebec, particularly yeah. in the south shore of Montreal. Um, it's a great indicator of if we did have these catastrophic floods, a 20 level sea rise, uh, that they're not going to come to humans aid. It's like, hey, 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 there's a sea rise. Can we damn this? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's some tr there's rainbow trout in there. What are you out of your mind? Get the hell out of here. All right. Uh, OK, Alex, uh, we have to get going. We'll have you back. Hopefully if there's well, hope we'll see if there's some fallout. Honestly, I haven't really seen a whole lot of buzz for an inconvenient truth. Uh, it's because so do it's not do not watch it. By the way, the people who are screening it said they asked Al Gore how they could help. He said screen my movie, which isn't really. But because we want as many people to watch it as possible. So please do not watch it is a really bad movie by a bad person. Uh, <laughs> I won't say pirate it, but but that's one thing you can do to help the world. The well, only I've heard you haven't seen it because the promotional material and budget really has gone into 2031 when they're releasing and giving it true three. Yes, yes, so exactly. So that's probably why we haven't seen much. Yeah, and he's spending a lot of time on the board at Apple. Al Gore has yeah. his interests are split these days. Uh, all right, Alex Epstein, uh, the moral case for fossil fuels. You can read it. You can find it. I highly recommend it. Sharp man. Alex, we'll have to have you back soon uh, with some follow-up on this. 
All right, good to be here. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you, brother. We'll be back. Viewer discretion is advised. Bad girls, what you want? What you want? What you want to do? When they, when they strong, don't get to come for you. Bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Feminist Cops is filmed on location with the brave, strong women of law enforcement. All suspects are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. One officer down, corner of 5th and Main, requesting backup. Going to perform a tactical reload. Thanks to Alex Epstein. Epstein, get it right. Always a good way to get in the good graces of a host. Correct him, first thing off the bat. Do you realize, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I, nobody takes a bigger steaming uh, 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 fecal pile on our show than us. Something no. I find funny is when you look at people actually the way they attack our show and our joke writing or dressing us dressing as women, they're taking insults that we wrote against ourselves with the Hitler exactly. sketch. It's like, <laughs> we wrote this. Anytime you see a bit where I'm getting insulted or hurt or embarrassed, I wrote it. Yeah. Half the time when you see me doing really embarrassing stuff, for some demented idea, I came, I, I, yeah, I came you, up with you, that. You wrote, I wrote it. That. You wrote it. I don't know. Uh, I no, but I was, that was, that was, that was a, a non sequitur. But if, you, if you'd have corrected Bill O'Reilly, first, you're gone. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the thing with Bill O'Reilly, like, it's okay, we can talk. But I remember Bill O'Reilly, it was well known. If you didn't yeah. mic him in 15 seconds, you didn't work for Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> Just that kind of thing. So, hey, Jeff, it's John. Oh, goodbye. Yeah, you're gone. <laughs> you're gone. It's Epstein. You're fired. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much to Blair White, Alex Epstein. Uh, we are going to not, is it Monday we're missing? Monday we'll be missing. missing. Tuesday we'll be back with our Hawaii special. That's right. We'll be back with a Hawaii special on Tuesday for Mug Club members uh, because we have some work, to, believe it or not, some work to do in Hawaii. I would actually take a homecation at this point if I could. I've been traveling too much. Staycation is much trendier your name. Staycation. That's the term. Is that actually the term? That's actually the term. Yeah. Staycation. staycation. Yeah. yeah. You just couldn't afford a trip. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cruel. For some of them. Oh, yeah, speaking of cruelty, so this is something, you know, people were talking about the Jordan Peterson test, and I scored off the charts in compassion, but not so much in politeness, which I think s some people may have been surprised. I don't think people who are, who are Mug Club members who watch the show with any great regularity, uh, you know this, I, you know, I, I hate to ever bully people. Uh, and that's why we never take pot shots like the Young Turks or like the left without offering them recourse. If we go after someone, if we attack somebody and they say, hey, I, that's not correct, we want to come on the show, and we'll always allow them that platform. doesn't mean everybody's allowed this platform at any time yeah. because you have two followers and an egg avatar. But yeah, Some of these channels like Young Turks have made an entire career, entire platform off of punching down. Yeah. It's, it's their thing. Well, punching and then just, okay, well, let's talk about it. No. 
And that was kind of Onishian until uh, until Blair White. Uh, you know, for a long Blair White was a tiny channel, and then he wanted to debate her when she was a, a bigger channel. When Blair White was a bigger channel, um, I know I'm getting just stop with the pronouns. People are always going to try and trip me up, no matter what it was. Blair. Um, so here's something that's important to note, and I was talking with Owen Benjamin about this. I always hated, uh, it was really hard for me to get along with people in the entertainment industry because of how uh, jackassish they were, because of how leftist and elitist they were. And then I always felt really pretty lonely with conservatives because of how, when I was at Fox News for four, four and a half years, because it wasn't necessarily a very creative environment. It was a numbers game. And I didn't relate to them a whole bunch. Now, um, the reason I disliked the left when I was in the entertainment industry was because they were bullies. I learned pretty early on being dropped from management for making fun of any... Pick the liberal cause du jour, whether it was being banned from a, from a college or getting calls to my management for making a Muhammad joke at the university cultural fair week uh, or cultural appreciation fair week. I don't know what it was, but I had these run-ins pretty early on. That being said, I was bullied a lot as a kid. I think a lot of people here were bullied a lot as a kid. I know Owen, Owen and I were talking about it. Most comedians were bullied a lot as a kid. Most creative types were bullied a lot, had pretty miserable childhoods, which is why... I hate this narrative that's put out there now that the LGBTQ AIP are the only people who are bullied. And I think that's where some people may be mistaken as a lack of compassion. I was talking with Jordan Peterson about this. My first instinct, honestly, you know, with the Chank Uyghur thing, when I went, when I hijacked his stage, I felt bad about that. I was like, ah, maybe we shouldn't upload this because we planned on making a joke out of it, but then when there were so few people in the audience, you know, I felt I, I said like you could pick a, a show of mine in anywhere USA that wasn't well promoted and it could look really bad. I I, I don't want to do that. And sure. we we're like, yeah, but then he tossed to the audience to make fun of you, and the guy refused to debate. So I kind of had to. I don't plan on ever doing that again, just so you know. Um, but even there, I felt bad. And my first instinct when I see people. Like you see on The View, the Little Miss American History X, Little Miss. <laughs> it's an ironic nickname. Um, I feel bad. My heart goes out to them because, I'm, you know, okay, I can see you were probably a misfit at some point. Uh, you probably weren't treated very well. And I could see how that would shape your worldview. So some people, they still feel bad because they just look at someone and say, oh, they're fat. Oh, they're ugly. It's the way that, therefore, it's mean to pick on them because naturally you're being the bully. But they fail to realize that they're watching an entire panel of people on broadcast television who 100% agree with each other. Whoopi, uh, jo what's her name, uh, Joy Behar, oh, the, the blonde woman there who was hosting the panel, and an entire panel of people telling you what pronouns you can use. At some point, we're adults. So it's not compassionate just to say, well, I feel, I feel bad for this person. It, and and that's, that's a trick that's often used nowadays, and sometimes it's happened with us where we felt guilty, like, Oh man, I mean, I really, this, this person is kind of a sorry character. I don't want to go after them. But then you realize, hold on a second, this person is actively trying to remove the freedoms of other people. This person is actively trying to remove the freedom of speech of other people. This person, who just so happens to be a land whale, is actively trying to remove your God given right to self protection through the Second Amendment. And then you realize, hold on a second, not only are they trying personally, but every single person in the industry that up until recently, thanks to the internet, controlled the entire flow of information are backing them up. We are now adults. And if you got a swirly when you were younger, you had someone call you a name, and I'm sorry if someone made fun of you because you were gay or you were trans. That's not acceptable. It shouldn't be done on a basis that's cruel. But now we're adults. And just being silent and being intimidated can't be confused with compassion. And the left today, this is what Owen talked about as well, they are the bully pulpit. I, I wonder if I, was, if I were born in a different era, if I would have probably gone after maybe the, 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 the Christian conservatives. You know, during the Brady Bunch era, I wonder if because everyone said this is the way you have to be, I've naturally had a, a problem with authority as seen in the personality assessment test with Jordan Peterson, <laughs> where I would have rejected that because they were the bullies at one point. Anytime someone's saying you have to be this way or when conservatives or Christians were trying to actively censor speech at one point, I would have been fighting against that. But we are in an era right now where the bullying comes entirely from the left and it does matter when you look at leftism versus constitutionalism, as we talked about with rights before, language matters. Rights versus commodities. These things matter. Facts matter. Statistics matter. What's going on in our country matters, not just how you feel for one person at a time, because that is what the left is using right now. They're trotting out people. That's what they're trotting out, just an absolute circus show of freaks, so that you hopefully stay silent. It's like, hey, hey. Anyone want to criticize the butch cutted chain gang BuzzFeed lesbian painting with their period blood with the purple lipstick? I didn't think so. They're being the bullies. 
They're the Corleones who are saying, uncle says hello and wrapping the piano wire around your neck because you used the wrong pronoun. So don't let that happen. That's one thing too. I see a lot of people saying, you know, I try, I, I just got an email this week, actually a direct message on Twitter saying, you know, people just, I, I don't want people to think that I'm this, this horrible, per I don't want people to think that I'm this, this person with a complete lack of compassion. But I also think that these things are, I think men and women are important. I think that, 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 that the societal norms that have created the bedrock of Western civilization are important. But I don't want to come across as a dick. How do you balance it? The yeah. truth is we're at a point where you can't. You can't, and it doesn't matter because you will be seen as the bully, even though right now to walk back up to the LGBTQAAIP, to The View, to all of late night, all of mainstream media, all of the DNC, YouTube, Facebook, who helped, uh, helped a man get killed, will be killed in Pakistan for blasphemy laws. These people are the bullies, and you can't, you can't balance that with the perception of compassion. Because the people who have set up the bully pulpit, and I've realized that this week, they have deliberately stacked the cards against you so that if you speak up at all, you will automatically be assumed guilty of a lack of compassion. So at this point, if you know you're compassionate, if you know that you care about people, no guilt. Don't feel guilty. Speak truth and understand that today in 2017, it doesn't matter who the president is, there is a bully pulpit the likes of which we've never seen. They are trying to determine what you can say, what you can do, and even what you can think and what the rest of us can even think collectively. And I do want to see more people going out there speaking truth than trying to feign compassion. Don't feel guilty about it because I did for a long time. And I'll rightfully admit that was a byproduct of my upbringing. Um, so don't let it happen to you. Don't get caught in it. They're going to vilify you anyway. Play the heel. See you next week. <laughs>